The Porsche Panamera and the Audi A7 are both large, expensive, and luxurious hatchback family sedans. They're very similar in size and stats, but they certainly aren't news. However, they have one other thing in common. Used ones are now cheaper than many SUVs. Which means it might be time to rethink the family car. You know, we have talked about this car for the longest time. It seems like just about every time we talk about some sort of performance sedan, the Panamera enters the discussion. Well, here it is with the Audi A7. This is a 2015 car and it's the Panamera 4. So it's the all wheel drive, but it's got the V6 in the front. As soon as I got in it, it oozes build quality. You can feel how well screwed together this car. This was built by people who really care about cars. The list price on this brand new 2015 that we have here is 95 grand. But the trick is, if you shop smart, you shop nationwide with $50,000 to spend, 55 if you can stretch it a bit, you actually have your pick of pretty good, decently low mileage Panamera. The V6, two or four wheel drive, or in some cases, the V8, which is the S or the 4S. Stylistically, I know Todd's gonna say, if he were blindfolded, he'd like the car. Personally, I like it, and it's because Porsche really did go after what the car should accomplish, and then the form language. I want to like the looks of the Panamera, I really do, but I can't. Porsche tried to make this look like a big 911. That means it looks like a sports car from the front, and then the back is a 991 that can't put the fork down. Keep this in mind, the Aston Martin Rapide. It's beautiful, it's a sleeker roofline, and it's not nearly as usable. Rear seat room is actually excellent. Now the downside is, it is only four people but you could be over six foot tall and sit in any one of these seats and be very comfortable. Visibility out of the front and the sides is excellent. Out of the back, it's not very good. It isn't any worse than a normal sports car. The surprise is just, this isn't a sports car. This is a big family sedan. Of course, there's buttons everywhere. This car is festooned with buttons, but I'm getting used to all these buttons and it's logical, it makes sense. Again, a lot of attention to detail, a lot of care was put into this car. That's what I love about Porsche. And if you didn't need that extra roof height of an SUV, why wouldn't this be fine? Four passengers, plenty of cargo space, this kind of could take the place of your SUV. It's that big inside and it's that useful. All right, here we go. A little bit earlier on our shoot, it was snowing like crazy. And this car felt so planted. Now here's the thing, this car does feel heavier than the Audi. And they're so close, they're such competitors. It makes its power completely differently. It's that long push in the back and I found myself winding it out and touching redline just about every gear change. Panamera has a seven-speed transmission. Of course, it's the great PDK from Porsche that is better than pretty much anything anyone else is doing. Now, seven speeds to the Audi's eight, which is interesting because this car will still start off in second any time you let it work on auto and will pretty much stay out of seventh if you have it in sport. It guesses what you want to do pretty well. And of course, we've talked about it before in the 991-911. I'm not in love with these uh, aluminum blobs that are the shifter interaction. They don't have paddles like everybody else, but that's just a Porsche thing. This car isn't underpowered. 310 horsepower doesn't feel like it needs more. More is nice to have. Starting in 2014, the 4S became a turbocharged version of the V6 in this base model. However, earlier than that, it was a naturally aspirated V8 with an awful lot of power. I mean, whichever version of the 4S you get, it has over 100 more horsepower than this original V6. It has a lot of punch to give. And that's not even the actual turbo badged version. I have a similar feeling to this Panamera that I do in the base Cayman. I keep expecting it to be just a tiny bit more powerful than it is. If you can get yourself into the 4S, that starts to have a power feeling and an output that you're like, okay, this is the car I expected. All right, 
Yes, more power right through the mid-range would be nice. Keep in mind, we're also driving this car at altitude. We're above 5,000 feet here, so you're losing a percentage of the power. It's not exactly docile. This is still a fast, agile vehicle. It's just the A7, which of course is a three liter, but is forced induction, feels faster in a lot of your normal things because of course it's supercharged. My tendency is to roll onto the throttle mid corner and really give it some power. That's where you kind of feel like that 300 horsepower is letting you down, but it isn't slow. Okay, yeah, that's fast. Yeah, that's um, that's very quick. I'm actually glad they took that V8 and turned it into a twin-turbo version of this V6 because this V6 reduces the weight over the front and actually makes this car rotate a little bit easier. Both Todd and I have driven this car on the track. We've driven the turbo version, the GTS. We've driven the V8s. We have talked a lot about how this car gets smaller the faster and harder you drive it. The sensation here is that it's actually more capable than you think. Every time I throw this in, I'm really surprised by how good the balance is. And it does feel surprisingly rear wheel drive. There's a lot of things about this car that feel quite a bit like the 991. The exception is that the 911, of course, has a lighter front end because it's rear engine. This does a really good job, though, of balancing its weight because this is a heavy car. This is a genuine sports car in spite of its size. This Panamera sedan in any form is pretty much the best handling sedan you've ever had. And yet, as good as it is, and as good as it feels, it doesn't feel like $95,000. The thing the Panamera does really well is it feels like an event. It feels like you really did do that thing that you're told is not supposed to happen. You went and bought a sensible, that's debatable I realize, family car that feels like a sports car. Now. The best part about this equation, though, is because it is so well built, so well put together, a used Panamera is your ticket. Here's the problem with the Panamera now that it is a good used bargain. At 50 grand, I start looking around in my life and going, okay, what can I sacrifice to own a Panamera? Which is not a good line of thinking for me. It doesn't endear me to my wife. This is just kind of where it puts me. I start to think, okay, how do I get a Panamera, which is interesting, but not necessarily healthy. So here's the thing you have to know. When I first started talking about doing this shoot, I said, Paul, I really want a winter shoot. I did not want 15 degrees, which is it's what we cold. have today. This is unbelievable. Hey, nice hat, by the way. Hey, thanks.